Hello guys and welcome to today's episode where I'm pretty excited to test out this Ryzen 5 5600G and see if this iGPU is maybe an alternative for your gaming solution. First of all, two things that you really have to know about this CPU right here. This is a 6 core, 12 threads, running the AM4 older platform, uh, but it is a Zen 3 processor unit that is actually running quite well and uh, you will be surprised by the benchmarks or the games that I'm going to throw at it and see exactly its performance because it's a really decent CPU, especially for the price it's given. Second of all, it is definitely a very good processor to keep in mind, especially if you want to boost your gaming performance or maybe your overall graphics performance on your older machine for not a lot of money involved. There are three scenarios in which I actually want to test this iGPU right here. First of all, I'm going to run it by itself in the system without any sort of GPU in there and just going to run its uh, standard configuration where it's going to take 4 gigabytes of your system memory and allocate it to the iGPU, or I should say the GPU processing unit of the uh, CPU right here and see exactly what sort of performance you can get out of this uh, CPU and if it's well, maybe good or not for you. For the second scenario, I definitely like the way that this CPU was uh, fought out by AMD because you can allocate half of your system memory to it. So for instance, right here, I'm running my machine with a 32 gigs of uh, 3600 megahertz. So I can allocate up to 16 gigabytes of RAM to the GPU side of the CPU for the processing unit. And that's really nice because you should definitely see some performance uh, increases uh, compared to the standalone configuration. The way to do that, of course, is accessing your BIOS, but don't worry, I got you covered. I will show you how to run the BIOS and uh, what settings you have to uh, change in there. And there's no harm, no foul in there. You can definitely do that and revert back to the settings uh, that is running by default if you're not happy with it. But uh, yeah, you should definitely see some performance gains by allocating more memory to it. And uh, we will definitely see this in the games later on. For my last scenario, of course, we are going to take this CPU right here and bundle it up together with an older style, or I should say a few generations old GPU. Why am I going to do that? Because maybe you are in that scenario where you have a system and you're looking for, a, well, a bit of an upgrade, or I should say a decent upgrade without spending a lot more money on it. And uh, well, you might have available to you already a GPU, which is a few generations old. It doesn't have to be an AMD generation uh, GPU. It can as well be an Nvidia GPU without any sort of issues. This this is what I have available to me. So this is the Sapphire Nitro R9390 running 4 gigabytes of GDDR4 in it. And it's actually, well, a decent sized GPU, I should say. Uh, it's running about 40 to 50 bucks on Amazon if you're looking it up right now. But yeah, this GDDR5 bundled up together with the CPU and the DDDR4 that I have available for it, you should definitely see some increasing performance than just running this CPU standalone. Definitely too much rambling, so let's just jump into the video and see exactly what sort of performance we can get. For the first scenario, as you can see, we are having right here the MAG, or I should say the Ryzen 5 5600G with uh, Radeon graphics in there. And we are running the, uh, well, the RAM at 3600 megahertz. And yeah, this is running in its stock configuration. If we go over here into the uh, advanced settings, and uh, advanced integrated graphics configuration. We are running in auto mode, so this will actually give us four gigabytes of total system memory that is going to be allocated to the CPU. So let's restart the system, see its performance in action. So just to double check whatever we have done in here. First of all, let's see what's happening. CPU, yes, the Ryzen 5 5600G with Radeon graphics, as you can see, and it's allocated memory. We should go over here in the GPU side of things, and as you can see, it says there quite clearly four gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory. That's how much of my system memory is being allocated to it because, well, we have around 28 gigabytes of memory left on this uh, 32 system uh, memory uh, configuration.
So for the second scenario, as I've said, I'm going to go ahead and allocate more system memory to the CPU. Um, this is an MSI motherboard, as you can see right there, but more or less the settings are available for you even if you're running ASUS or any other sort of manufacturer for these uh, AMD platforms. It's not locked by the CPU, so definitely even though it's not in uh, maybe the same place as I have it here, you have to look around in your menu, in your BIOS, but you can definitely find these settings and uh, don't worry, there's any sort of, there's not any sort of issues that you can uh, run and do to your PC. Uh, so uh, I'm going to run into the advanced mode settings and then gonna hop on over to advanced. You should be able to find in your um, menu somewhere integrated graphics configuration. So that's where you have to go to allocate more system memory to it. Right now it's running on game mode and I am going to allocate to it. Let's just zoom in a little bit here so you can see. Uh, the options are available as, are, as they are available run from auto all the way up to 16 gigs so I'm going to run 16 gigs right now gonna force it to run uh, in uh, 16 gigs configuration and yeah I'm just gonna save it as is boot up once again into Windows run the games again and see exactly if we are going to get any sort of performance bump So now I think it's high time that we throw in the in the mix there this GPU and see exactly how we can run the CPU together with the GPU in a standard configuration, uh, keeping in mind that we haven't really gotten any benefits after increasing the buffer size. So I'm just gonna run the CPU in a standard configuration with four gigabytes of video memory allocated to it and bald it up together with this GPU right here. Let's see exactly what sort of performance we can get out of the previous titles. So guys, third scenario, it was a bust. After two whole days of trying and working it out and going through all the forums and videos and different bio settings and hardware settings, I was not able to actually get this APU to run together with this old style GPU right here. It turns out that AMD has actually discontinued software support for this. Uh, they used to do this in the past with their FX series uh, APUs at the time, uh, but they have long since uh, discontinued that product support. Um, it was called in the AMD Catalyst, I think, dual graphics support. You don't have that available to you anymore, not with these styles of APUs anyway. Nowadays, what AMD uh, has, uh, they throw on the table the Crossfire support, which basically allows you to run two of the same GPUs in your system. To jump around, I would say, the GPU permutations or calculations in, uh, in the frame buffering side for games in order to get you the extra FPS. But this was not the scope of today's video. Um, just at the end of the two days of troubleshooting, when I was just about burnout and uh, ready to throw in the towel, I decided for the lulls of it to throw in my um, RTX 3090 in the mix. I know who in the right mind would throw in an RTX 3090 together with an APU and try to get extra performance that way, right? But just for the lulls of it, I did it and lo and behold, I was surprised and astonished to see that it was actually working. So it was actually pushing this little APU to its limit. So that was the 1900 megahertz and about, I think, 60 to 70 percent in Red Dead Redemption and Battlefield 5. Uh, trying to work together with the RTX 3090 to give you that extra oomph in performance. At that time, I was absolutely flabbergasted. I could not believe it. So I actually decided to try it a little bit longer with the R9390 over here. And lo and behold, I had a revelation. Uh, it turns out it, that it really matters what games you're trying to play. As soon as I threw uh, Doom Eternal into the mix, which is a Vulcan-based API uh, game, it was actually made, made with Vulcan in mind. Uh, it turns out that it unleashes some of the performance of this APU right here, about 15% of it, but it does actually crank it here and there to its maximum operating megahertz uh, frequency of 1900 uh, megahertz. Uh, but yeah, I was not expecting that. But I threw in, for instance, Red Dead Redemption in the mix and decided to render the game instead of the D DirectX 12 in Vulcan and nothing happened. I could not get this APU to run with this GPU in Red Dead Redemption. The only game that I was actually able to get that 15% performance uplift from the APU was only Doom Eternal. So in the end, after two whole days of troubleshooting, this whole thing was a bust 
and what i can actually recommend you guys from scouring the internet for the past two days is that if you have an older style gpu from nvidia you might have all the odds again uh, in your favor i should say because it will actually probably work like that without having really to do anything but if you do have an amd product on hand like i have this very old gpu right here it, it, chances are it will not work but anyway guys i'm pretty curious to see if anyone uh, of you was actually able to run uh, older style gpus like the one that i have here with newer style apus from ryzen what exactly have you done what exactly settings have you been uh, through and how successful were you, were you at achieving some extra performance in games uh, because i am pretty curious uh, it's been two whole days that were quite exhausting to me and i have not really reached a firm conclusion other than the software dropout from a and d for their uh, lineup of products over here so please guys hit me up in the boxes down below with their comments and uh, I'm pretty sure that other than me everybody else watching this video might be quite curious on how to tackle this sort of problem uh, if they were thinking of going down the same route and getting extra performance on a budget here. Once again guys, I'm Alex from TechFusion, thank you very much for choosing to watch today's video and I would be very grateful if you decide to subscribe and hit maybe that notification bell down below so you don't miss any future episodes and see you guys in the next one. Thank you!